go look at the list of running processes and again, do the same kind of exploration. Is this stuff legitimate? Should it be running on the machine? And the tool that we all use for that is the built-in tool, Task Manager, of course. Unfortunately, Task Manager doesn't provide us a whole lot of information, just like Auto Runs. It provides us the, the essential information, but if we want to dig deeper, we're going to need to go further. For example, I've just pulled up Task Manager here. I'm going to search for Logon Help because I launched it earlier, and here it is. And just like for MS Config, it's telling me the bare minimum. It's telling me that the image that's running that process is logonhelp.exe. If I want to go deeper, I need something else. And so I've written a tool called Process Explorer. Process Explorer, how many people have used Process Explorer out of curiosity? So a lot of you in here have used it. Process Explorer is uh, intended to be a task manager replacement, kind of a power task manager. And one, I'm going to go ahead and just actually, instead of talking through those things, bring it up and show you. I've got it running here. The first thing that's different, that you see different uh, from this uh, t Process Explorer's view, from Task Manager's view, is the fact that we've got this nice tree view here. And what the tree view does is show you the parent-child relationship between processes. Any process that's a child of another one is going to be beneath that process and indented immediately to the right. So for example, services here, the service control manager application, every process that's a child of it is going to be hosting a Windows service. So the parent-child relationship is especially important for understanding the role of malware because malware processes often come in groups where one will launch another one. And you can easily see that relationship in Process Explorer. In addition, you see the other, some of the other information that we were talking, saw in Auto Runs as well, the icon associated with that image, the description, and the company name, all information pulled from the image itself. Let's go find our Logon Helper now. Here's Logon Helper. It's actually running. And now with Process Explorer, if we want to go even deeper, what I can do is double click and go look at the Image tab here. And what I see in this Image tab is the uh, same description. It's not verified. But notice that there's a Verified button down here. So I can check the signature on demand and see that it's actually not verified. It doesn't have a signature. The version information and timestamp uh, aren't really going to be revealing anything here. The path tells us it's in the System32 directory, just like Auto Runs did. There's the command line used to launch it. There's the current directory. All of this information you should look at because they could be clues about the purpose of this code that uh, we're investigating. You can see the start time there. And let me mention what the column, comment column is. One thing that I recommend you do, especially on your server systems, is go investigate the processes that are running. Make sure you understand what they are. And once you do, annotate them. And you can enter a comment here and then add the comment column to Process Explorer, which I'm doing here in the column selection dialog. And now over here on the right, I see the comments associated with these codes. So anything that I haven't investigated yet is going to show up there without a comment. And the things that I have, those comments will remind me the purpose of those applications. So unfortunately, though, this first page of, process, of the pro properties of this process really don't tell us much more than we already know about this process. So most malware, a lot of malware, and this is going to be coming increasingly so, disguises itself just like I've made this program disguise itself as something that looks legitimate, that will make it very hard for you and for antivirus people to determine, is this, or antivirus people, is this really a piece of malicious code on my machine? So what I've done is let you look inside the image to see what's in there. And sometimes, a lot of, well, sometimes that can give it away. So that way of looking inside is over here on the strings tab, which will show you what it does is scan the image file and dumps into this list view any character that's printable. Now, it's going to be showing you a lot of garbage because it's looking at code and saying, is this, are the bytes of this code printable? And it's just dumping it in there. And we can see some of the garbage here. What you should do if you're investigating and you're really concerned if you've got a piece of malware or not is save this off the file and then go look at it. One easy way, though, to check to see if they really haven't been thorough about hiding the fact that they're malicious is to search for common strings that you might find in malware. Most malware wants to communicate with the website to send your information or to get ads to display. So let's, one of the things you can search for in here is .com. So let's see if we find anything here. Huh. Looks a little suspicious. So in this case, we've been able to 
figure out a little bit more about this process from the strings tab, identify it, and now we can deal with it. The basic steps to manually cleaning your system of malware involve identifying suspicious processes. And suspicious processes today have a lot of common characteristics. They have no description or company name. They live in the Windows directory. They have no icon. And they include strange URLs like the ones we saw on their strings. The steps are to identify those processes, can make sure that or have a good idea that they're malware, and then suspend them. And you heard me right. Don't kill them. Suspend them. I'm sure a lot of you have played the game of killing malware and task manager and trying to stay ahead of the self-healing technology these guys have developed. If the commercial industry could learn a lot from the malware community, a lot of you might have experienced this. You see a malware malicious program in task manager, you kill it, and two seconds later it's back. And how did that happen? Well, it, they come in groups, like I said, and one process in that group is watching the other one. They're watching each other in a ring. They see one of their buddies go down, let's restart them. They do this not only for processes, but for files and registry keys as well, you might have seen. You disable the thing in msconfig, and it pops right back. So that's why I say suspend them. And Process Explorer has a suspend feature that I'm going to show you in a minute, where you can put them all to sleep. And now that they're asleep, they're not going to realize their buddy's gone. They're going to be too, that was interesting. <laughs> they're going to be too uh, drugged to know what's going on. And so once they're asleep, then you kill them. Then you open auto runs, find their auto start locations, and remove them, and record where, these, where they live on disk. So the final step is to go and clean off the disk, delete those things off the disk. What I'm going to show you is that actual piece of malware that I infected my machine with, that media encoder, running in a VM. And what I've done but to set this up is started Process Explorer before I actually ran the setup to this program. I've run the pro setup to the program, and now what I'm going to do is press the F5 key to refresh Process Explorer's display. Process Explorer has a feature called re difference highlighting, or refresh highlighting, where any process that's new that wasn't in the previous refresh will show up in green. So what we're going to see show up in green are all the processes associated with this malware. There's one exception, though. This is auto runs, which I started after I installed the program. But every one of these other processes here is a real piece of malware associated with that, that piece of software. And I just want to point out one thing. Why am I not showing you anti-spyware here? Because I don't want to embarrass anybody, to be frank. Because I can find people to embarrass. Well, first of all, it's not a good demo if it cleans the whole thing off and I have nothing to show you. But it turns out when I downloaded this thing about a month ago, I went looking for it again because I thought it would make a good, example, a good demo to show you real malware. And then, then I tried some real uh, commercial anti-spyware to see how effective it was at catching this stuff. Well, first of all, the anti-spyware of a company that I'm not going to mention, begins with letter M, their anti-spyware missed a bunch of these things. So even after real-time blocking and scrubbing and scanning and rebooting, there was still stuff left behind. Another major anti-spyware company, also beginning with the letter M, they also missed stuff. Another one, beginning with W, also missed stuff. Now, the, some of these companies have updated their signatures and now catch everything here. But the point I'm trying to make is being able to know how to really clean stuff off manually is an important skill, even today. And also, running multiple spyware is also something that's important. Spyware signature generation and classification isn't as advanced as, it, as antivirus has gotten. And it's going to take a while before uh, differentiation on signature checking is not going to be a, a selling point for the anti-spyware community. So let's just take a look now at the characteristics of this stuff and see if we can identify malware. Well, first of all, some of these things are nicely advertising themselves as malware. All of these things have either descriptions and or company names that reveal themselves as being adware or spyware. These two don't. And they both satisfy the suspicious criteria. They live in the System32 directory. They have no description and no company name. And let's just take a look at IE Host, which has a legitimate sounding name, though. If we go over to the Strings tab, right there is a string that gives this away. So this is a real piece of malware with a string, adserve.com, which gives the purpose of this thing away. So like I said, the idea here would be to suspend these things 
and you suspend them by going to property 